Okay. Yeah. To now officially call to order the August 1st meeting of the Bolton Conservation Commission. And as always, we will start with a roll call. I am Brian Barabee. I am Jeff Bryan. Jeff Lawrence. Laura Stevenson. Laura Rebel and Bob. Okay. Uh, first up tonight, the Bolton Conservation Commission will now hold a public hearing under the provisions of Mass General Law, Chapter 131, Section 40, and under the Bolton Wetland Bylaw, Chapter 233, to consider a notice of intent filed by Brandon Ducharme for the proposed subdivision located at 649 Main Street. Public meeting to be held today, August 1st, here in Town Hall. Welcome. Good evening. Uh, Brandon Ducharme, Ducharme and Phyllis. Here on behalf of Two Rock Development, 649 Main Street, and we filed a notice of intent for uh, our work within a buffer zone and a resource area uh, for a five lot residential subdivision. Uh, and to kind of walk it back, uh, 649 Main Street, uh, I think it's the third house down on the left as you head east on 117 from here. Um, it's a 30 acre piece, um, and we've met a couple times with the planning board um, just to, and the applicant working to develop this piece I guess in a way that uh, works in the best harmony of the downtown uh, the current owner is looking to live at the residence so obviously he wants to develop it in a, in a manner that you know helps kind of preserve that that look from Main Street um, this first plan just to kind of walk back to how we came up with what we, we've actually filed for is um, we didn't look at any kind of a cul-de-sac development. We looked at a traditional layout using the existing frontage along the main street here. And if we were to conventionally develop this property using um, Bolton zoning, we have a series of backland lots and conventional lots that basically, if these are backland lots and this is your conventional, uh, which yields the, the five lots as shown here. Uh, in order to develop this uh, in this manner it would involve you know losing the existing farmhouse uh, the existing barn and obviously it would eat up the entirety of the 30 acres there so we because we um, are less than six lots we, we're not subject to the major residential bylaw which is uh, basically where you're required to look at an open space plan so we approached the planning board to see if we could choose to do one and one of the reasons we had needed them is in order to do an open space plan, it required a waiver to their water regularity. Uh, so we went in and looked at this, this layout here. And the idea is obviously we're creating a lot that preserves the existing house, the barn. Uh, presently, he's got a, a pumpkin patch in, in this area here. And we're setting aside greater than a third of the land is open space. And we, what we try to do is provide a buffer between the abutters um, and the existing property and concentrate the development kind of up here in the middle. Uh, it does require uh, a wetland crossing. And again, we looked at a common driveway design just to obviously minimize that. Um, and this is essentially the plan we're looking at. There is an existing, this is the farmhouse, this is the barn, that driveway. Um, the field is, is kind of what's, what's shown here, and there's an existing crossing, and this is like a, a cart path that kind of heads out the back. So what we're looking to do is to bring the common driveway in and cross in the location of where the existing crossing is. And then again, this is a closer view, but this is kind of the, the middle of the lot where we're looking to develop these. Um, so as we kind of go through this, uh, it is greater than three lots, so we are subject to the stormwater management policy. So this driveway uh, incorporates, or it's designed in compliance with the stormwater management policy. We have a couple of detention basins. Um, this is the existing wetland crossing. I guess we just back up and just talk about the wetland areas here. So th there's a bordering vegetated wetland that kind of comes through at his property <laughs> here comes down as an excavated ditch that comes around and then this is boring vegetated wetland also there's an existing culvert here where the cart path and then it kind of continues down and much of this area is wet here there are two uh, potential vernal pools that were flagged on the property there's one here it's not there. what's that it's filled in okay and um 
there's another one out, out here in the back. Um, the wetlands were delineated by David Burke uh, prior to us getting involved in the project, and tonight I am submitting, I, I did receive a report. Uh, from yeah, I did get that permission as well. Um, While you're on the yeah. wetlands, do you mind just mentioning Pointing out, so Dave basically just had one question, one flag that was different from previous plans. Is that what I'm understanding? That's that's, and again, I just got this today. Right, so, right, right. Yeah. So, so um, where can you point that out? I know you just got it. Today. Yeah, I'm not actually reading. Um, I figured out. <coughs> assuming we're going to do a site walk and all that, you know, we, we yeah, get Dave we, out there and have him kind of go over all that. Um, ASF 8. No, it could be that one. Okay. But I was just curious yeah. if it was close enough. But you're right, there's a sidewalk still on shore. Yeah. So basically, this is a boarding at Shea Wetland. It has a corresponding 100 foot buffer zone adjacent land. Uh, adjacent upland resource area that's designated by this orange line here so the basically the work that's within the resource area is the driveway in order to access the, the upland portion of the lot uh, we've gone through we've done soil testing uh, this kind of shows the septic areas the house areas uh, wells uh, and all that my other second question is yeah. just and it's sort of an obvious question but just to clarify you're improving the crossing obviously correct okay yes. so basically we we designed this to meet Bolton's contract with standards okay um, there's actually uh, an arch culvert so we're, we're, we're spanning that so essentially what we do is we'll probably remove that existing culvert open okay. open up that channel um, we are even though we're spanning it we're replicating at a ratio of three to one this is kind of the replication area here adjacent to that work. There's a couple head walls associated with that um, concrete span. And it's like that, the detention basin is fully within the buffer zone, right? Or yeah, so the yeah. challenge with that is obviously gravity. So, you know, as we kind of come through here, this is pretty, it's actually pretty flat coming through here, which is why you see the grades. We've elevated the driveway in order to be able to capture the drainage. This brown here is basically there's going to be a open swale, you know, that uh, um, yeah. will collect here, and then most everything here is going to tie down and collect here. Uh, both these basins will um, capture and retain, and there's obviously emergency spillways um, down adjacent to the wetland. Any questions? Please. I'm just wondering if any of the run up were off the oil, etc., that you always get on the road will end up in the wetlands. Uh, so there's a couple of factors because we need to meet like this, the best management practices. There's obviously we're going to have vegetated swales, and then we have Which the, the, the basins. The yeah. Oil yeah. And and that house, I mean, it's the vernal pool, of course, is. Mm -hmm. As far as I'm concerned, the biggest issue yep. here because there are so many rare animals in it. Yep. And I'm not so sure that this house so close, it will really, really be protected enough. So it looks, it looks like they're so going down, down in, right? So the, the house is actually outside of the uh, jurisdictional area. It's really just a portion of right. so is this the pond? The green. Yeah. 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 And you said that one was buried? Bears? No, I'm saying that since dry. I live next door, I have peepers or yeah. frogs. It just has filled in. Oh. oh. That is, I mean, you you have seen it. Yes. There are still wetland plants in it. Right. It's yeah. wetland. Yeah. You mean it's, it's just not as... So we used to have yeah. It's not as rich with species no. right now. And it looks like we're hitting all the offsets for that too, with the exception of the yeah. driveway. Right. Um, right. Yeah. Mike, can you... Uh, my question up here is yeah. where is the, the lot line is off the page, am I correct to say that? Yes, so I can look at this. Oh, okay. I see. Is there any way to shift oh. that so we're out of that 100 foot around 
If, if, we, pool? if we could have, we would have. Okay, uh, and that's I guess the option, the you know, really what we're battling, you can kind of see yeah, here, is, is the sharp topography yeah. here. And limited to where we had testing. So, you know, one thing we could look at here would be, you know, doing some type of retaining wall or something like that to kind of tighten that up a little bit more. That's it, because that takes it back and well, yeah, there's no one else. Yeah, I'm guessing you did the soil test too to see if, if there was some other way. Yeah, you know, even from yeah. the septic over here, the front yard's probably too small depending on how it's cut. I certainly like this plan much better than you. Yeah. <laughs> that, there's, a, there's a septic system that goes to the wetlands of that gets drained out real quick. That's never an issue with it, Jeff. No? No, like he's held all the They know what's going on. It's yeah. outside the... The whatever, the boundaries. Yeah, yes, yeah, so everything is set. Where the wells have been, anyway, have you marked uh, them? Yeah, I mean, there. each one is one year, this yeah. one is one year. Um, I see the other one, I see that mark, yeah. Yeah. Um, could you yeah, yeah, right set there. off right? Uh, I mean, the one the one thing in my mind that I'm seeing here, and it looks like you you're doing a fair amount of grading change. Yeah, right? I'm, I'm looking at your, your 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 new grading lines here relative to the lighter lines behind it, which would yeah. be existing, correct? Yeah. Um, um, you talk about this area, right? This looks like the largest catchment. Yeah, and it's within within the zone, you're saying that this is a resource rich area right behind it. Yeah. Um, can you talk about what what's happening here as far as the water collection and how your proposed grading sure. is protecting the area behind it? So the challenge, well, first of all, because it's so flat here, these are one, usually we have two foot contours. But because it's flat, these, these are one foot contours, so it kind of looks maybe bigger than usual. Um, but because the groundwater is so high in this area, we get a two foot groundwater offset for our stormwater management areas. Essentially, what we're doing is this is a berm, so you know it's going to come up. This top, yeah, so you're going to catch it. Kind of berming that up, mm -hmm. and that is going to capture everything through sheet, sheet flow. This is a uh, kind of spillway here, which kind of a weir that comes over and infiltrates some, but also just retains the, the water. Other questions? Yeah, no, please. Yeah. And, and actually, could you, could you introduce yourself to? Yeah, yeah, we have to officially. I'm sorry. On Main Street, Thank you. Right next to it. Um, you're going to do a sidewalk, right? So I, yeah, I, I was going to propose that to you, but yeah, myself personally, I'd want to get out there and just take it. Yes, yes, yes. Really acquaint myself with that, with where it is. Yeah. And this area here, then. So that's kind of not much affected. That's where it is higher up, right? Yeah, and when we're outside the orange. Yeah, yeah. so I mean, oh, this kind of movement here is basically yeah. we try to kind of work and preserve all these, these yeah. nice trees there, even though oh, it's outside exactly. of the, the buffer zone there to kind of work Still, around yeah. that existing. See, not many people ever go in there, so it is kind of pristine. What was that? Well, this is a kind of pristine area because no, not many people don't walk there. Yeah. So yeah. we had one of some of the first porcupines who were breeding in this area. So, and, uh, you know, barred owls and all those things. So what I can do, which we typically do is, you know, a lot of this is self-explanatory, like with the existing cart road where we are, and usually we'll stake, yeah. Yeah. you know, yeah. but what I can do is kind of show what I'll stake what these ponds are. Uh, we'll see this crossing and then I can kind of show where this driveway as it comes up, up around it. Yeah, and we'll have the map out there with us as well. Yeah. Um, Martha, do you have a question? Martha Remington, yeah. um, Chairman of the Historic Commission, but really I'm speaking as a private citizen here too. I've seen the historic wetland maps on this area, and I was trying to figure out how you could fit any houses in between these irregularly shaped and many, many wetland areas. And of course you have the townhouse hill there, steep area that under conditions of heavy snowfall it's going to come down there and into some of the Brigham Farm development. And I just wondered if there are any uh, variances that are being requested for these 100 foot buffers. And I agree that this is a sensitive area for species that 
don't have a lot of, you know, you don't hear a lot about porcupines these days. Um, and of course the two vernal pools, which apparently aren't protected because they're on private property. No, no, they, they are, are not protected. registered. They are protected whether they're potential or certified. They are um, protected. They're just not certified. So they're protected regardless. Okay. But I, I'm just curious how this could, what a great job Desharmin Dillis has done to fit uh, any structures in here in these really irregular and very numerous wetland areas. Of course, we had a drought last year, but these have been tested probably, what, this year under conditions that aren't maybe the most wet that we've had in the last 30 years. So wetland delineations are based off of um, in annual high water mark. So that means over the course of, I forget how many years, it has to be that annual high water mark. It's not just from that year. And who keeps those high water marks? Conservation um, Commission or the no, state? No, it's, it's within the state. It's within, um, I think, on a federal level as well. Um, I mean, it doesn't come under floodplain, right? No. So that that's... Um, so when's the last the time the state has, has done these high water marks? So, I guess I can probably soils. quickly... Right, so soil testing. As, as we look at this site, I mean, I think kind of the path we're going down is, is has this site been altered historically? You, you know, where this might have been wetland and historically this was filled in and now we've got a situation where there's high uplands here that, that didn't previously exist. As you look at this wetland, you know, it's obviously very clear we're looking at hydric soils, hydrology, vegetation and it's pretty clear where the wetland line is. All through this area where, where the housing is and that, it's all natural. I mean, you can tell as we did uh, soil evaluator holes. Um, undisturbed. Undisturbed, yeah. natural, it's all hardwood forests. I mean, it's it's always been up. You know, it's, not, it's not a situation where this, this has been altered in any way in the area of these houses or anything like Do that. Do we know if this was a farm before? <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure. No. I don't think so. I think the farm that was And there. it's pretty level, right? Uh, in, in the front. So a lot, a lot of this development is up in the back. Yeah. And you can tell when you get out there, it, it gets significantly higher than, than the wetland area to the point where it's actually pretty steep up here in the back. Um, it goes all the way back up to the pipeline. Um, in regards to the wildlife, I mean, that's the other main reason for going with the open space plan. Mm -hmm. So really, as opposed to doing a traditional subdivision, you know, we're setting aside 17 acres here to preserve permanently, you know, that all that forested habitat, particularly, you know, over here, which is all upland. I mean, it's it's wet down here, but you know, this this whole strip up and around here is all all upland, and that'll be open space. Mm -hmm. Martha, would, would, help, would you want to help? Can we pull up the other map for a second? Um, I believe they're open to that, I and mean, the only the only thing is. They would like to continue using if he can preserve as much of his pumpkin patch mm -hmm. and, and everything in there. Yeah. Where's his pumpkin patch? It's kind of right, right, right there, in the middle. He's, he's going to lose some of it, but that's kind of where you know he wants yeah, to. There are so a nice split little fence and kind of you know, dress it up the best he can. And there are actually yeah. Yeah. Oh, definitely in the front yeah. where yeah. that patch currently is, where he's currently. <laughs> Uh, farming. I'm not space sure the correct term, but basically using the property for that. Um, and then there are some little stretches that come towards the back. And I don't have the map on me right now, but it, it's not a large concentrated area. Um, but there are some pieces, and I want to say that they come along this close side here, and there might be one or two small patches in the developed area or the proposed developed area. Um, but I can pull that up before the next site visit as well. I was going to say, Martha, the, the, everything, actually, the, with this map, yep. everything inside the orange is, is basically non-jurisdictional for us, that it's outside of what would be considered wetland or wetland buffer area. Mm -hmm. um, the one thing we can check and will check when we do the site visit, and, and we have Rebecca for this too, to a certain extent, is to make sure that we're happy with how the wetlands get flagged. Mm -hmm. In other words, this is what the, where they're saying the wetlands are, and based on where the wetlands are, these are the offsets, which kind of puts this outside of accepted wetland area. Um, but that is something we'll check too on the site visit to see if we think those lines are accurate still. 
Um, but if they are, then most of what they're proposing is outside. It's just going to be mainly that crossing. Really, this section really here, again, back, just back to this area. I mean, we don't have that. It really yeah. comes down to, you know, we could do a wall, which is kind of a hard boundary there. Uh, in the past, we've, we've revegetated these. You know, it's far enough removed from where the actual leaching system is. It's the breakout grading. Yeah. Uh, you know, we're open to, you know, even doing some shrubs or something. They're just, mm -hmm. at least it'll be more of a naturalized slope as, yeah. as opposed to a hard wall. Uh, the there's certainly a, a, a lot of rock out there. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I could do a boulder wall there. <coughs> that back if that's the preferred option. And I just had two questions uh, with regard to historical commission. Right. Is the wetland crossing now, is that like a stone culvert and thing, or is it just graded? It's a pipe, actually. Yeah. Oh, it's a pipe. Yeah, it's cold, right? So it's fairly, it's modern then. It's not historic. Uh, no, it's not like a stone line in or anything like that. Yeah, it's a, it's a pipe. And are there any stone walls on the area that are going to be disturbed here? There are, and I knew you were going to ask that. So <laughs> we'll preserve as many as we can, particularly in front. This is a really nice one here. Yes. So the idea is to kind of just open up as much as we need and, you know, if we can kind of use the existing ones and, and kind of, we've always kind of curled them in along with the driveway. Um, and then you can see, you know, some of these just where the grading is with septic, you know, obviously we're going to have to, you know, lose those, but where where we can we'll continue to preserve them, there's, there's actually a fair amount of stone walls out, out there that some will be in the open space. Um, in other words, you don't plan on removing any of those stones because most homeowners can always use little fences and things to highlight gardens, yeah. you know, with stones to try and incorporate them. Uh, I don't know if they're huge or just average size stones, but we really don't like to see stone removed from properties because they're part of the heritage of it took a lot of what work was to get there, in there yeah. mm -hmm. previously. These are mostly field stone. It's a pretty nice. Yeah, but they can yeah. still be. I mean, most people, they're happy to have those incorporated. Yeah. Totally and if they didn't want them, maybe a neighbor <laughs> would like to have them simply because the stones are worth money as well, and they shouldn't just be sold off, really, if possible. Thank you. Any other questions? Yeah. Uh, I just want to understand, you know, when they plow all this, does this yeah. go, where does it, uh, you get a 20-inch snowstorm, where's the snow going to go? I mean, is it just plowed off the side of the road, they're going to use sand on it or salt or anything? Um, they don't know. You don't know that question. It's too early to answer. But right, I mean, it really just comes down to, I mean, there's obviously going to be an operation maintenance plan yeah. associated with the common driveway that gets rid of And that's going to be done by the homeowner. Correct. Well, so there'll be a homeowner. Um, I mean, obviously, coming in here, there's, there's a couple turnouts that are required. But I mean, really, you're going to come in and just going to plow to the side. You know, it's going to be a side bank. It really isn't going to be up, up to you getting here where they're going to be actually stockpiling and, and moving it. And, and associated with driveways, which is a you know, considerable dis distance away from the buffer zone. Mm -hmm. In terms of sand, you know, I would say, you know, just plowing for no reason. Most people don't sand every storm. You, you know, it's a treacherous driveway. This is all really flat, particularly where we're crossing the wetland. You know, if there was ever you know, an area that was, this is where it kind of picks up and it's, it's safer ice, here. Ice in there. Yeah. Well, that's something to consider, I guess you'll Yeah, it, it's a fair question. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and Brandon, I know that, you know, you, you didn't answer my question in a way, but yeah. and just right for me looking at this, th this area and how the stormwater is being collected relative to the crossing and relative to the resource area behind it, in my mind is the one thing that I'd be interested in taking that's a hard look at. Yeah, this game is part of the project. Yeah. Yeah. But, but yeah, I, you know, again, we'll have to go out there and really take a look at yep. mm -hmm. that idea. And I know, like you said, it has to need stormwater management, so we're going to have a big retention basin. So I guess snow is part of stormwater somewhere. management, too, right? Mm -hmm. uh, say. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I don't know enough about it, but, you know, I'm just wondering so how they would plow yeah. it and so what that would have an effect on them. The other thing to point out is uh, where we are, we did file with the planning board for Condor a special permit. We're on next Wednesday. This, the drainage and the whole design was reviewed by Fred Hamway on behalf of the planning board. So we've actually, uh, he, he went through all the drainage calculations and, and all of that. Um, we've already got his comments and, and kind of worked to address some of those which are open to talk about at the next meeting. So, so the drainage actually has been 
review it on behalf of the town as well. Mm -hmm. Any other questions up here for right now? Did you have any initial thoughts, Rebecca? Three, four bedroom houses. Um, I don't know if they've decided. Pro I, we don't really do any three bedroom. No. Yeah, I know. Just but, just but, cost, well, but no. Well, yeah. well, the thing is that that would possibly shrink the um, the septic. Yeah. Uh, especially on the back house, it might not be a bad idea to consider a smaller house, which is better for our tax burden as well. Yeah. Um, right. And it was to say it might be favored by people in town. It's a nice mm -hmm. way to change up the development too. Um, not saying we're definitely going to request that, but I can see that's one way to pull some of that stuff out of the wetland in the back. I think it came out of the downsize. I think the property just coming with a wall. Just mm -hmm. in, yeah, and get it fully out. But and if that's the preferred mechanism to do that, we can do that. All right. Yeah. And again, I want we to kind of get out there and take a look before. Yeah, the way I look at it, sometimes the grading makes more sense. We size everything out on a five bedroom, to be honest with yeah. you. Yeah, most yeah. of the houses that are built are fours, but the way we went, especially you know where you are in proximity, you'd rather have the larger septic yeah. with the better treatment. Small, you know, as opposed to having an undersized system, yeah. you know, that's going to potentially fail. You know, it provides a little more value there and more treatment. I the yeah, gives more options. Than five bedrooms, three baths. Did you look right here? Yeah, I had a question about the roadway. Is it impervious and all of the uh, area around garages and driveways, are they all going to be impervious or can they be? Garages and driveways are going to be non-jurisdictional to us. Um, oh, okay. Just the shared driveway will be. What's that, planning um, board then? The yeah, planning yeah. board and this is slightly better hearing about I'm this surprised too, right? that's no, 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 it's planning. It's planning that's board, not yeah. conservation jurisdiction. Oh, it's well, not within the wetland it, buffer So it's zone. not within the wetland buffer zones and if there were a foreseeable benchmark that would be affecting the wetland area, then it would in turn be um, our jurisdiction. But this isn't a sizable enough project or impact um, to cause us to have jurisdiction outside unless for some reason once this begins there's a problem but it, uh, that's very rare there's a give and take too I mean mm -hmm. we've been going through this for a number of yeah. years yeah, it's yeah not it's with, not with it's pavement better. versus you know gravel or something like that and Wilder Road probably is, as an example yeah. you know the preferred mechanism has been the pavement yes you get the impervious but we do have the drainage design but as far as you know, rain events and ongoing maintenance, erosion, those yeah. kind of issues, it's preferred. Obviously, we'll have to. You don't have washouts. Yeah. 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 yeah, we've actually found more problems the with the impervious, believe it or not. Uh, the, but the blacktop is so toxic. I know, but uh, a lot Maybe of times the, the dirt surfaces will wash out, and they end up clogging a lot of the wetlands. We're trying to keep mm -hmm. stuff out of, um, especially the driveway is really well used, and it allows everything basically to seep back in, anyways. We've gone back and forth. It really is. It's a tough question, particularly in this too, because what we're trying to do is incorporate open drainage, low impact development. You know, we have these vegetated swales through here. You know, with gravel as they run. Yep. You know, then that's all the water we're designed to, to be able to sheet off is now going to you know carry down the driveway and exit at one point. You know, yeah. over time. So. Anybody else? Thank have you. Questions at the moment. Did you have initial thoughts? Did you want to save them for next time? I I already sort of gave uh, my initial thoughts on a few questions that I had. Um, I think I really need to get on the site, just as I'm sure everyone else at this table feels the same way, and just walk through the property with the plan and um, see exactly where everything is to sort of put things in perspective. And then I'm sure I'll have a few other questions, but. I definitely like this over the conventional, I'll say that. Um, I'm happy to see um, the two vernal pools further away from development. Um, this end does concern me, so I think that's something that I'll think about when we go out to the site, we'll see the area. Um, but yeah, I mean, aside from that, and then the other thing is, I would strongly suggest to the commission, and this is for next meeting really, but that we, we've done it before and put in the conditions that the vernal pools are certified. Um, just because I think that's a huge important, and as Abby was saying, these are valuable resources and obviously that had some effect in terms of whether it just 
had extra vegetation growing in it and sort of took over the area, whether it be invasives or not. This one seems to be still carrying the species, so. Um, yeah, I don't know. Know. Those, those are really my, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, but again, that's, I'm sure, more questions and other things will be clarified on a site visit. Um, do you want to attempt to set up a site visit now, or would you like to do it via a doodle poll and whatnot tomorrow or earlier this week? Um, I don't know how. What is their day that works best for everyone? Sunday. Sunday. <laughs> I can do Sunday. I, I, Saturday whatever. or Sunday. You know, so, so. Yeah. That's just the person. Just. Okay. Um, I tend to go more weekdays. <laughs> yeah, well. I can do a weekday, but it's just plain. Yeah. Okay. yeah. What about time frame? I know very busy, but is there a time that works for you? Or no, no, no. Okay. <laughs> That's what I figured, but I just figured I'd have. Well, we appreciate you making time for this at least. Um, why don't I set up a doodle poll? Um, but what time will work best for you? Like, well, it depends on when you, when, when you actually want to do that. I mean, do you want to do this next week? I'm off all week. Oh. But I can, if I have a two days notice on something I can pull in half a day somewhere if it's later on in the morning or the afternoon, but it has to be in half day blocks and it can't be on Monday and Wednesday. Okay, well I'll send out a dual poll tomorrow for next week. So everyone's gonna be here and no one's gonna be away, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um so we'll do that so then we'll have a confirmation by this Thursday. Yes. Um Madam Administrator, I have a question about sidewalks. Mm -hmm. Uh, I remember going on site walks and multi uh, commission committee and board site walks in the early 90s. All of a sudden, your prior administrator said that site walks were not open to the public. And then I spoke with someone and they said that yes, they were open to the public. So I'd like to get that straightened out. Yeah, I'll double check that for because you. Because I kind of felt slighted when the historical I, commission couldn't go to a site walk on yeah, I think Mark, Long Hill Road. I'm not sure this is 100% sure, and we'll take a look, but yeah. I think it's it's up to the homeowner, the property owner, um, if they want to allow other people on the site walk. Uh, we actually need to coordinate with them as well, and we have some jurisdiction depending upon the project to go out on site. But to have members of the public out on private property, I think you need their permission. Um, right. Our policy has usually been in the past that if the homeowner is fine with neighbors coming or anybody coming on the sidewalk, then as a commission, we're fine with people coming along. Yeah, especially a Butters. Yeah, right. uh, but I, mean, I think it's going to come down to that. I could be wrong, though. That's yeah, our experience. So I mean, we've, yeah. only, we've only had a couple that have been an issue where right. the applicant has asked, yeah. you know, not to. But um, I think because you're on the historic commission as well, and you jurisdictional concerns in that sense mm -hmm. it 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 may allow you to be on site either way but i'll check tomorrow i was I'll curious i mean this is a 30 acre property i guess it would be the entire 30 acres that is within the national register historic district not just a 50 foot for example down at flatly and to non-contributing homes um if you get my point. Yeah. yeah. Yep. And um, of course, this is not going to require fe federal or state permitting, correct? Correct. So in terms of this site, the, if, the if applicant did, is not against. If it did, stuff. then they would have to be, you know, notified. But this is just a, a residential, uh, non. Permits not required for the, for the Commonwealth or the federal government. Correct. Yeah, because 117 is a state high. That, that would be the one that would grab yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. The curb cut, but um, it's not. Well, yeah, the curb cut is. And anyway, just wanted to get that clear because we haven't had a lot of places like this that have been slated for development. So we'll try. If you think the homeowner is comfortable too. Like when we yeah, figure out a date and time, we'll make sure we let you know as well. Thank yeah, you they, very much. yeah, they don't mind because again, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah they, you know, they they want to live there, so yeah, so that's yeah. the other They want to be at the site walk, also whenever we do that. When we okay. that so mm -hmm. we're open to obviously doing that next week. All right. Um, I think sure the date is officially keep an eye on his pumpkins too, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Decide that now. 
Do we have a next meeting date? Uh, we can do the 15th or the 22nd. Uh, we can have, I guess, 15th or 22nd for the next possible meeting date. Equally bad. Right now. <laughs> um, the 15th is better. Okay. Uh, after that point, it's yeah. okay. It's, it's a no show. And that keeps us on our, our lovely two week, every other week schedule. Too. Okay. All right. In that case, I would like to uh, make a motion that we continue the public hearing for 649 Main Street uh, until our next meeting Tuesday, August 15th, at a time to be determined. Uh, do I hear a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. So continue. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Jeff B. Jeff B. In the second. Oh, hi. Shoot. Shoot. A quick introduction of yourself for the camera. Um, okay. Um, um, practice on this um, And uh, over at 32 Cedar Road, so we have a comprehensive permit for 30 detached condominiums. Uh, we do have an order of conditions that's in place. So we've been working closely with the commission's agent as, as we've been doing our work. Um, and we made a few uh, site plan changes, which the ZEA has approved. Uh, some of the modifications are in the buffer zone, so we've um, been talking with Rebecca, we've helped go through the changes and the board can make a determination if they thought, correct me if I'm wrong, um, if it was suitable for it to just be field changes or if you wanted to hold a hearing to do an official amendment to the comment. So, um, let's spin up this way. So this is the uh, original one, I just highlighted the 25 foot zone. Um, there's a wetland pocket here, uh, and there's a culvert connection here, and we're not we're not building anything in the back, so everything's up front. Um, Do you just want we, to point out the hundred foot as well? Hundred foot is no, is here. Yeah, hundred foot is here. Um, so the areas that we change, we've changed this cluster and this cluster to a lesser extent. Um, essentially, we had a series of detached garages and. Uh, we modified the plan to incorporate and just to make them attached in most cases. So we've eliminated them with the exception of the first one that we built. So, <coughs> side, I'm do the same scale. Um, yeah, if I have some. So I can start, I'll start over here. This, uh, this house here, number one, was really just off the 25 foot zone, as you can see it. So we had, um, and you can, the pavement is a little turnaround here, it came back, there was a uh, six bay garage uh, structure here. There's a retaining wall that was running just off the property. Uh, and again, this house was in close proximity. What we did is we still have the same circular drive, um, but we put in a small common drive here, which is outside the buffer zone. Um, and so this house, that number one that was located here, was flipped over here, so it's further away. Uh, and we were able to, you know, we pulled these houses in and up a little bit, so we've got a little, we're over here. You can see the, uh, the retaining wall was essentially just off the edge of the turn. You know, we've got, you know, some extra room there. Um, you know, for some lawn, there's more buffer as well as some storage, vegetable problems and such. Uh, this area here that was the six bay garage, we just left a little visitor parking with uh, four spaces there. And these homes were, were pulled up away from the wetlands. So this was pulled up, this home was flipped over. So overall, you can kind of, uh, you know, see the, the difference. This was the line here, just off the back of the house. Um, now that, that where that whole house is, is, is free up. So um, uh, generally less, uh, uh, we pull things away from the wetlands. The grading is, is generally the same um, in the areas, uh, but it was the, the biggest thing there was, was pulling it away from the, uh, 
And what are you doing with this new claim space? Uh, that'll just be lawn. Lawn? Uh, yeah, so lawn area here. Uh, do we have to lawn it? Can we push it back at all? Um, we could look at uh, if you know, she actually, uh, Sue had put in, you know, the, you know, the, the hay bale line mm -hmm. is, is already installed. Right um, part of our agreement uh, was that, and we haven't worked in this area yet, that we put in um, you know, fencing or a, a, a barrier. We certainly could move it back to that location. Yeah, and this is, I think this is a 40 scale. So, you know, you're looking at probably 20 feet further away, mm -hmm. uh, and that's, that's fine with us. We have no problem with that. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, absolutely. No problem there. Um, on this side, the septic systems, the, the, the Beach fields, nothing has changed with that. As at that I, I shut them off because the plan just got too busy. So, um, but so none of that has changed. You know, some of the location of tanks and mines have changed, but it's all within the same developed area. Um, in this section, as you can see, we had uh, these homes that were, you know, were larger. were actually closer to the to the wetlands. We had some green space in here. Um, these all all had detached garages. So we did the same thing. We've got a cul-de-sac here that we pulled in and essentially have um, you know, a garage under here and attached garages on each unit. Um, you know, these to kind of face this kind of overall you know, green space that we have. The other thing that we did, there was a, a roadway that was coming in on this one. You can kind of see it all the way over here and back and you know, servicing these, you know, these garages and these homes. That we're just completely eliminating. We're actually gonna pull it up and then we'll go back to grass uh, was the request of a suggestion of Rebecca. Um, so these homes, again, you can see, you know, the old 25 feet, which we were barely off of a structure. We've, we've, we've pulled the homes back. Uh, we're about the same in this location, you know, a little bit, a little bit away, but marginal here again, you know, this corner we're you know, we're, we're further off it, but relatively marginal adjustments here, but in the back, we pulled it up again, probably about 20 feet. Uh, and we could look at doing the same thing there of, of moving things, uh, you know, further away for that, uh, that permeable barrier, um, or that, the permanent barrier, um, to give a little more space. She didn't bother really even changing the, the grading there. Um, but the same thing, we can, we can, pull, we can, it as far as we can pull it back and probably get an extra, probably about 15 feet here, um, for that barrier. Uh, in this, this phase is constructed, this phase we're starting to construct now, there was one minor change, you can see there was a detached structure here, and we essentially moved this house over, put a garage under there and got rid of that. So otherwise, this is substantially the same, this phase isn't in the jurisdiction, but we just adjusted these two here again, um, uh, attached them, essentially the way that they were located and just tweaked them a little bit. So, um, we also have... Um, Sue Carter, who's the engineer, had done an evaluation based on the amount of um, the impervious, and we had less impervious now than we had before. This is not had to submit to, um, to Rebecca. No, 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 it's about 2,500 square feet. But, um, and even with this, where she did some additional tweaking and shared some walkways that she included, I think that number, uh, the reduction would increase a little bit, but it it not substantive. It wasn't worth um, you know. It wasn't worth redoing it to show that it being you know twenty eight hundred versus twenty four hundred. Um, so um, our request would be uh, if the board would consider it to be um, uh, a field change. Uh, we could prepare a plan outlining um, you know uh, the modification of where the, the, the barrier would be in these two locations in particular and submit that to the board um, for their acceptance. And obviously, you know, there'll be regular inspections and visits as we do in the work along the way. We did just finish, we had a you know, culvert crossing over here that we work with Rebecca on. I think uh, you know, she's been happy with um, our site contractors, very responsive, it's done a great job. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that went well, and we would continue the same amount of communication going forward. So there's no more buildings actually that structures by getting them detached and so it's um I would, so I would definitely just first thing off the bat, I am happy that it's sort of contained and moved everything more together instead of having the detached garage and it's a little bit more spread out and more towards the resource areas. Glad you got rid of the housing or rather moved it further away from the BW. Um 
But again, like Lori was suggesting, if um, if we can do that so that the lawns minimize, but then you have a larger buffer between that and the resource area, that would be extremely helpful, I think. Yeah, what we're doing when we when we start to do the work over there, we can actually, and by that we'll need to, to do some upkeep on the, on the, uh, the hay bill line anyways, but we'll just put in a new one on the new location and yep. do it on both of them and you can inspect that before we start the work so yeah so you'll get that space up front instead of us going in and you know digging it out and then putting the fence back so right. uh, we'll just avoid that's, going there uh, that's field going process. into the swamp right if i'm remembering correctly so yeah it's basically just going to naturalize this field it's naturalized yeah there's a lot of uh you know there's a lot of this vegetation that's you know yeah uh, mixed thicker up. brush right thicker brush best way to put it can you just refresh my memory? This jogs, uh, the wells I know are in the water. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Long time ago. Yeah. That was before my time. Yeah. Yeah. Before my time. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that very well. Yeah. Um, this jog here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, is there a reason, is that going to be restored naturally? Or um, it will be restored. What it is, is in that location is the, the lines and oh, were brought lines. into a little hub that's okay. located right there. Right. So I, I can't say that we can't do work around that because when we're connecting the wells, you know, mm -hmm. there's a certain amount of work. I, we've done the bulk of it and I think we ran, when we did the work for the first lot, I think we ran the lines out here. I, I have to confirm. Um, but at the end of the day, it's not really a maintenance, you know, it, I, I, can I'd we be check it up at all? I, I think we can. Um, I, let me just check with the engineer and uh, the the well guys to see how much activity would be necessary. Yeah. yeah, because um, you know there is a, a, a hub there for power and, right. and stuff. Yeah. So I'll, I'll let me check. Okay. I know along here we can bring it up. I think we can pull it back and, and essentially you know get up to that get up to that hub. Up to that point. Has any any work we had to do back there in in relation to the existing wells? I believe. It's all been completed out to about this point, okay. um, but I can confirm. Um, but I can certainly, we can tighten it up to a certain extent. I just don't want to say we can go on the opposite side of that. Right. No, okay. Okay. Anybody here to comment on Craftsman Village? I just have one question, Mr. Please. Chairman. Is Craftsman Village in any way about 649 Main Street? That's a good question because that goes way back to I, what was going to be the soccer field. I don't believe so. I think everything there abuts the, you know, the White House, the financial services company. Yep. Um, I but I can't be a hundred percent sure. In, I was just curious. I know sure. there's a landlocked block. Yeah, here. There's, a big there's a lot. There's about well, six. Just seven, yeah. There's about six. Little animals are going to yeah. want to run over to your place while they're mm -hmm. doing six forty nine, and you know what I mean. It's going to be kind of well. A lot of the a lot of facts just being kept as open space. Yeah, the, the this right whole lot field. cuts back, and there was going to be a soccer field there, and it's just being left. I mean, remember the, the picture that we took decades ago. You could see the deer in the bushes. In the bushes, way yeah, back I, I've, in that I've seen picture them, of that land. Yeah, back here in the morning, they're just checking things out, and you still see them. Uh, you can see them. You know, they've uh, they've trimmed the whole gas line, so it's now this gaping hole that runs up <laughs> the middle right. of the woods, and you can see some of the uh, some of the wildlife that's back there. Um, but the piece what we have is about 15 acres. I think we're only building maybe half of that. So you've got uh, probably, I'm going to say six, seven acres of really unprotected space, I mean protected space that won't be developed between what we're doing up front to where we're going back. And I don't think we about that property, but I, I can't say, I can't say for 100% uh, confidence. Adam Wilson, 641 Main Street. I was just wondering where are the cranberry bogs in relation to the um, I've heard, you know, I thought those were urban legends of cranberry bogs. Freddie had told me that, uh, yeah. you know, that years ago um, yeah. that there were some back here. Um, but I haven't seen them. It could have been in this in this wetland area. Um, I don't see it, but I, I'm, I wouldn't necessarily know what Unless to they were flooded way. every winter, they would disappear. No, they were a natural. A natural one? Yeah, that's yeah. what John Powers told me. Was somebody saying that, that and I could be wrong too, that it was on the other side of Sugar Road, like where that culvert did out, that, that that whole area floods well, pretty maybe, well. Yeah, and if that was a barn, they found the natural ones there at one no. point. I could because yeah. I, like I said, I could, could see be. the back of this area. But Freddie had mentioned it to me is. that that uh, that yeah. someone told him about it in the past. He, he had never seen it himself. Hmm. Um, but it was similar. John, John yeah, Powers yeah, could be, could very well be. It's just one line that I can't resolve. They went over there as kids and picked it. Do that, yeah. This is it. This is the previous project had started before I got on, 
it was good. when you took over for Craftsman Village, they cleared out a lot of the front, right? They had, yeah, yeah, they had stripped out. And Jim was just completing the okay. and yeah. left. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we didn't have, we had a little clearing. So it's hard to see what was there before. We had a little clearing along here that was about it. Yeah. You know, and some brush on yeah. the other side. There was a little bit of a buffer, mm -hmm. but there wasn't much uh, uh, substantive yeah. education. Yeah. We had to take that. Yeah, yeah, he sold out alone right. at some point. Can I ask one quick question? Absolutely. Um, um, you, I know you get some different line types turned on. Yeah, so yeah, I I'm, try, I'm, yeah. I'm just trying to resolve them in my yeah. mind looking yeah. back and forth. Um, this this heavy line here that follows the do not disturb. She, um, the is engineer, that, is had, that a fence? Uh, the engineer had put it in saying, oh, we could do this with the hay bales line. And I said, well, the hay bales are already installed. That's the hay bales. So, th well, they, they're installed along the 25 foot, which is what we used on this one. So what we did here is, is basically her suggestion was, was was similar to yours that we could pull it back you know 20 feet because we moved the building uh, both you know on, on this section and here okay. that's where it, it diverged from the line the, that line doesn't exist over here she didn't yeah, and then she, it looks like there's some type of cutout or alcove we were able to okay. in part as part of uh, the modifications I should mention that I apologize as part of the modifications with the zoning board of appeals we had some of these you know, this was a comprehensive permit, so we essentially can get a lot of flexibility on lot lines, let's say. Mm -hmm. So we had a duplex, we had a, a, a four bay garage that one was in one phase, another one was in another phase. So when we eliminated those and we had them over here that we were working around us, we were able to clean up the lot lines a little bit. So that was all done. That's been already approved by zoning board, they revised. Um, a and R has been signed off. That's already been recorded. So this lot layout is uh, has been updated. But that's I I, I didn't even think to mention it. Uh, but that's why you know this this crazy leg you know moved and we took a, a little bit of you know this area uh, we had to, to flip over uh, with this lot line. You can see we moved over because the lots had to have X amount of acreage to comply with. Five and nitrogen sure. and all that kind of yeah, stuff. Sure. It's a literally a jigsaw puzzle <laughs> with this when you look at the lots. It was more of a jigsaw puzzle here, but that's that's what it was. And so these were areas where um, the amount of disturbance was going to be pulled away further than what was anticipated. And uh, so Sue had suggested we could you know we could move the hay bales there, and um, and you know that we can do and we can shift out you know that uh, you know that barrier from uh, from where it was anticipated. Great. Thank you very much. Sure. Other questions here? Any other thoughts you may have? I mean, it, it seems to me, uh, like the other people too, that I mean, it, it seems like the plants a little bit better. We're pulling everything further away from the resource area, um, and again, getting out that road that cuts behind. Um, it would seem like these are improvements, and I would say they could be field changes because um, it doesn't. It, it looks like, if anything, they're they're doing a better job of, of protecting the wetlands from their original OOC by pulling stuff back a little bit. Um, but I could be convinced otherwise. I'm not sure if people are seeing it different. I think it's a positive, especially if you can pull the, you know, those sections back. Mm -hmm. Did you see any other major changes coming? No. no or do you feel like this is? No, I think this is it. And it was, it was really just the garaging that was the issue, so. Um, ZBA, we met with them, they were comfortable with it, they approved it, you know, kind of uh, conceptually, and then we had the engineer go through, you know, before we came here, finalize all the septic, finalize all the grading, so what you're seeing is is the finished plan. So, um, no, I don't, I, also, don't, I, don't see um, any, I don't see any other modifications coming. Jeff, just to sort of touch on that as well, obviously, if for some reason a major change had come up, they would still need to come before us as well and go before the ZBA to the best of my understanding. Correct. Um, so there would be a check and balance at that point. Like Even if you don't see it happening, that's what has to happen. It, yeah. So I, 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 it, it, I'll never say never on this business, but I, I think we're, you know, we're pretty set. We, you know, sold what we have and we're moving on. So we're pretty well established with the, uh, you know, with how things are, are, are progressing. So um, I said, I don't, I don't see any, uh, any any substantive modifications in terms of you know how we shift around some of that uh, the driveway access. So, um, but if we did, we would come back and um, you know if it was modest, we'd come back to to advise you if we were just you know shifting something. But um, I I think we're I think we're comfortable with the plan and 
I don't uh, anticipate seeing anything else. This one predates me, right? So, so uh, you're probably a couple. Yeah, I mean, we, this one took a little while for the OC. Um, it wasn't too bad. I, it, was, it had its challenges, but most of the stuff, I mean, that road that came back around was one of the things we hated the most relatively, but it was the only real access that we had to give there. Yeah. Um, it seems to me like this is, you know, it's basically fulfilling the original OOC, but only being a little bit more proactive and pulling stuff away from the wetlands, which, you know, to me, I, I couldn't see opening up another hearing on that. Um, yeah, it's a positive. Yeah, I mean, there's no real, I mean, there's nothing that's coming further towards really the resource area or further into. That's just going to be a small uh, gazebo community gazebo. location. A little what? Gazebo? gazebo? Yeah, yeah, for uh, resident yeah. for the intent. Yeah. So we're really protecting the fuel. It's a really petite house. It's got to have total yeah. comfort. <laughs> yeah. okay. uh, All right. Um, so we don't really need to vote on this, right? Or should we do it? I think you should, just so that we have it. Sure. Um, yeah, just take a vote. So or a poll. Yeah, we we it's probably a poll, a right? Yeah. Do you have a revision date? Uh, it's it's seven, you can do, use 73017, just final and stamp it if you want to do that. That's correct. What is it? 73017. All right. Um, I, I, I need to say you stamp it 730. The last revision date here is actually 727. I don't know if you want to use that instead. And just, yeah, she's got a revisions list, so I would, I would use the 727. System. I didn't see it upside down. Yep. Okay. In any case, we are we are gonna try to hold a roll call pole vault pole vault. Wow, pole vault <laughs> on uh, whether or not to accept the plans that are presented tonight. All right, so I'd like to poll the commission uh, on do you believe that we should accept the seven twenty the the plans labeled seven twenty seventeen uh, for field amendments to the Craftsman Village Order of Conditions. Uh, Lori. I, I have no issues. Okay. Jeff? Fine. Fine. Jeff? Fine. I'm fine. That's fine. Thank you. With, with the yeah. 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 of and those we'll, being moved yeah. in. And what I will do is I'll have the engineer prepare, you know, just a little plan that highlights these, highlights those the sections that the modifications can be. and. You know, clarifying that when we're you know working in those areas, we'll uh, adjust the hay lines uh, to those new locations, and that those can be um, inspected prior to work. Sound fair? Yes. Yep. Thank you very much. much. Thank you. <laughs> 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 you can. Yeah, you're not going anywhere. I'm not going anywhere. Please put it in. Walk on the fire. All right. Thanks, everybody. Oh, Thank you. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Okay. The Golden Conservation Commission will now hold public hearing under the provisions of Mass General Law Chapter 131, Section 40, and the Bolton Wetland Bylaw Chapter 233 to consider a request for determination filed by Megan Duhame of 670 Main Street for a proposed shed. The public hearing will be held this evening, August 1st, 2017, in Town Hall. How are you? Would you, 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 you mind introducing me? Sure, I'm Sean Duhame of 670 Main Street, Great House, right across the street. Jeff, I don't think that you seen. Yeah, this is the one for my side, right? Or did I email it to you? Thank you. So you just want to fix, so just to give you a little bit of backstory, um, we received notification that there was shed being built, so we sent a letter immediately, and your wife had come in immediately after to seek to be in compliance. So she had come in and had a conversation, a lengthy conversation with me on what to expect. Um, 
why, what the commission's about, where a jurisdiction is, um, and why, and explain to me a little bit why they had started building the shed and didn't realize the wetland, um, which is the case a lot of the time. And so we walked through the process a little bit on both the NOI and the RDA. And I told her that it is a very close area, which I was talking to Sean today as well, and explaining that. And that's why it said go with the RDA first. I said it's your, it's up to you which one you file. But due to the closeness, I'm not sure what the commission will say. And because it's so close and it is typically a no-touch area, um, an RDA will basically save you the time unless it is something that the commission will look further at. Um, but they seem to be fairly flexible um, in terms of if there's another area or if the commission wanted to discuss, um, discuss it further, basically. And I did try to look at some aerial photographs in terms of what the property was before. There is a large tree you can see in that picture near Lori, and um, that actually covers a lot of that area, so you can't really tell if it is lawn or not. There is some, obviously, ornamental vegetation in terms of lilies and other things that were planted, apparently, by the previous owner. Um, but again, no clear definition of lawn area, um, because at that point it would fall under the conversion of lawn. Um, so that being said, that tarp there is to manage poison ivy. Um, yeah, and a lot of the, the property is very hilly. From what I know of it, there was a, a septic place back there a while back, which created this sort of large hump around the back of the property. Um, and all the toys and the trucks and all that stuff just kind of roll, roll down that way. Um, it's one of the, you know, our lot is under three quarter acre. You know, it's very small relative to a septic and house, and then a culvert on the other side. There's, there's very little area for, um, for a shed. All right. So the culvert is on this side and yeah, it's all the way all the way back yeah. it's like you can see the grates at the end of this driveway all of that runs straight well, straight back, back. yeah so it's you know it's fairly unusable area and i don't know did i i passed in on my copy of this correct the, uh yeah this one is there some pencil shading on yeah it yep. okay so that was basically that's just for me um you can't actually see in there but this is the where the shed is there's a toe I'm, I basically just shaded in where it started to slope oh, and it yeah. is a fairly steep slope and the shed is basically at the toe um, so it's back right yes yeah yeah, yeah. Um, and without a survey I mean what's your best guess as to where the wetland actual resource area starts so where the line is when I was looking online I did look at the um, national wetland inventory um, as well and it just from that it seems that it falls right where this wooded area ends so it's it's like right on the um, far corner of the shed so and that's why before I looked that up because that I just looked up um, this week in terms of where exactly it was um, that's why I'd suggest because I knew it was close so I suggested probably just go with the RDA um, and figure out if this is even doable because of the lot and because of the sloped areas and um, where else they may or may not be able to put it. I don't know. You think um, it's within the 25 foot now? I would be fairly confident in saying it's within the 25 foot. So. Okay. Uh, I so Go ahead. That, that means it's close to the wetlands and it's in oh, that oh, zone. Okay. We're only yeah. talking wetlands. Yes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so just just to clarify, um, our jurisdiction is relative to the wetland area um, and that's all we have jurisdiction over or if there's open space conservation land. Oh, okay. um, but it's 100 foot from a um, bordering vegetated wetland 
a 200 feet from a perennial stream, which I was explaining to Sean, um, and I explained to your wife as well. Um, and then Bolton specifically has the 25 foot no touch, um, which means you can't do anything within that 25 foot unless it's been lawn or previously landscaped area. Um, so that's really what we're looking at. Um, that being said, there was um, last year there was an area, and I guess um, some of the storms affected one of the trees that are closer to the home. Yeah, um, quite a lot. Yeah. yeah. Um, so there was was there a foundation or something here before? You said there was trash from the previous yeah, owner. Yeah, the previous owner had used it to kind of throw a bunch of debris, like bricks and like a little small yeah. of concrete and, and things like that. So as far as vegetation is concerned, nothing could grow there. Um, just it would be filled with leaves and, and debris, which we've, we've been cleaning out slowly, which is one of the reasons um, we're you know, removing that stuff from that area. It's just trying to make it look nicer, presentable. Right. And then I'm, um, and maybe this is for a different conversation, but your wife was telling me that, and in that picture you can see it and you can drive by that their garage is sort of starting to collapse on itself. Yeah, it's, it's a really unsafe structure at this point. Um, so are you looking to, uh, and like I said, this may be a different conversation, and I know she said it'd be something yeah. in the future, yeah. but she mentioned that in reading the RDA, it lists um, storing equipment in terms of maintaining like your yard, so lawnmowers, stump blowers, various tools to maintain home. Um, these tools, equipment would be stored in the shed, keeping them contained. Um, so I'm assuming, and she touched on a little bit, that you prepping for that in the future? Yeah, it's, it's it one of the, the yeah, it's one of the projects that we we um, had been planning for. for. Yeah, it's like as much so like if you went and looked in there now, you would know from restoring the home to its current state that I keep and I save like, everything. My wife makes fun of me all the time. Uh. Um, but yeah, you know the the intent is to just like I've done with the home, kind of bring it back to to some historic standard. Um, yeah, but right now it's, it's it's extremely unsafe. There's no found no real foundation to speak of. It's field stone. It's blowing out. It's you know it's really unsafe to be in there. So having any kind of heavy equipment like a snowblower is uh is kind of scary. <laughs> it's like you dump it in there. Um, so yeah, the intent is to you know over the next few years do something with that. Yeah. May I? Oops. Sure that is so, an old like pool, like it was there when we bought the. Um, what is it? Just a, it's like a little play. Area. So it's like a little sandbox. That was actually my question too, because and that's the wife did bring it up. I obviously had no idea what she was talking about. So that structure going on the site today, it's actually on sort of like wooden stands, basically like any play, yeah. um, jungle jam or whatever you want to call it. Um, that's actually where we store a lot of stuff on Yeah, the and so my, my question <laughs> is... <laughs> storage issues in this yeah. Because yeah. that's sort of on a level area. Would it be... With existing. Right. Would it be beneficial to even swap the two? So it's it's much smaller. Um, so the, the shed's 10 by 10, so it's, it's small as is. It's way under the allowable. Yeah. That, that structure is much smaller. If you bring it over, it, there's still there's still the slope there is hard. Right, so but, was, but yeah. so I don't mean to interrupt, but gotcha. would you still meet any setbacks that you would need? I I don't I don't know. I mean if it, I mean it's it's kind of close in the same way. Okay. Um, the it's right on the septic, so the septic is essentially here. The box is here, and then the field is all this open space here. Right. So it's it's close there, um, but again, it's you know it's a structure that doesn't have a foundation. So yeah, and uh, to clarify, obviously by this it's a wood flooring, if I'm correct. Mm -hmm. um, cement under it? No. There's uh, there there's some like CDU cement block units on the okay. backside. I think like three. Okay. I just level them. 
Yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah. It's killing me. I didn't get out there too. Um. Any questions, thoughts down there? So basically, you're looking to store your um, lawnmower. A lot of like sports equipment, like ball. I mean, there's always a dozen balls in the yard. Um, because you. Like I guess my only concern. <laughs> my, my, my more concern is you know like you know, you get a, you know two gallon thing of gasoline in there or whatever. Um, that's more my concern. Um, this village, you know, you're right there next to the wetlands. Um, yeah, right now it's, it's, you know, it's stored underneath the, uh, the carriage, uh, the, the old garage next to the culvert. So, I, I mean, I kind of consider it a better space than, than there, to be honest with you, because there is so much water that does run through there. And the land there is, is very low on that side, on um, the back side of the, uh, the garage. Uh, what do you think you would find wet? As far as what, what do you think the IFSS would be? I mean, is it one of those where you possibly run along there and pull up and then run along here and pull in? Um, sorry. No, no. So I was, I was trying to think where, where, where about the 25 foot buffer zone would end? You know, is it one of those where it would start here and end here and then we're cut off here too? I think closer to here. Yeah. Um, only because vegetation wise, cattails. Or, I mean, that's, you have sort of a random one here, right so that's, now. yeah, so yeah. this is maybe like five feet off. Yeah. So I would consider this. That's uh, probably. Probably where the wet one is. Yeah. So the back so bit is five feet from that. So another 20 feet. So another 20 feet. Wide. And is mm -hmm. this wet here yeah, where the cover goes? Or wet enough? Mm -hmm. That I would have to double check. I know it's probably wet enough. Over here. Um, yeah, it's very wet. Yeah. It's basically it's the opposite. So that's the slope though on this side, correct? Yeah. Or am I not? It's kind of sh no, the elevation is. So where's the garage? The garage is here. Yeah, it was there. Yeah. So um, like right sort of where this pencil mark is here. It, this slopes way down this way. The culvert runs right under here, and then the slope bends right behind the, that that yellow uh, so, so the slide, is like which I took off because it was too much of a pitch for so the boys. Culvert is a, like a catch basin on the street. So if you like just down at the end of the driveway, yeah. there's a couple um, I don't know, like the street grates where yeah. the water yeah. drops yeah. in, yeah. like all the way right from here and the yeah, and all like it's a ton of water rushes. Yeah. Through that cold and, and then back yeah. into here, yeah, yeah, um, and it it disperses well, but I would say it's very wet to about about right there. Yeah, it disperses well. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, I'd say it might be. Yeah. It's it, that's upslope. Yeah. Um, or excuse me, at the top of the slope. So I'm not sure what's in, what the length of the slope is. To be honest, over here. Yeah. Um, this is a little bit more gradual than over oh. here. If I'm remembering correctly. Sorry, I say yeah. Yeah. This is more gradual on this side. That's more gradual. Slope. It's still. It like, is. I would, it is I would say from like here to there, it's probably like ten feet. Yeah. Yeah. It is. And then this one's off. Yeah. You know, from here to it's, it's the drop off is drastic. Mm -hmm. Um, they must have got a lot of fill to put that septic back in there. Probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah,
this had the end result of what it was before that. Because usually the first thing we'll do is say, all right, just get out of that 25 foot zone and can we put it somewhere else on the property? Um, yeah. But it looks like we're, we're, we're probably going to get cut off from a lot of the property that's viable once yeah, we start looking at what that offset is. It's here, maybe, a, but this is still a sloped area as well. You can't really tell here. Yeah. So it's either move it up this way slightly, like by a couple. Feet yeah. Yeah. Or it's where this project. is. Yeah. Um, is it for the but it's almost it for the disturbance. So that's the other thing is, um, and I can double check the regulations. But again, in terms of the conversion of lawn to an accessory for the house, that is allowed. I couldn't find anything that yeah. clearly showed that, unfortunately, which would make this a little bit easier. Um, but the other thing is, um, I can't remember the exact wording, but basically there's no other reasonable area and if it's necessary. So that is sort of for the commission to determine. The only thing, I mean, my neighbor's lawn does go back fairly far. She does have a nice grassy area that goes back fairly far. but. The wetland does its own thing, you know. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's yeah and that's yeah. why I did look at that as well when yeah. I was looking at aerial. Yeah. I didn't print one out, but because you can clearly see that there's one year where it's it's lawn, and that I mean that's a long, long time ago, um, but it does, and it makes sense that Prior if the culverts so. here, it's going to come and it's going to follow the path of least resistance. Yeah. Um, which is why I'm hesitant to say yes, it was definitely landscaped aside from the fact that just before it, you have that large tree there, but also you have some little lilies and other vegetation that was clearly planted. Yeah. Um, and that could have been back in the property planting to a right. point right before it naturalized. Yeah. That tree was uh, there's a sugar maple. That's that large one. Yeah, so that so probably was another maple, swamp maple tree or something like that. Did it fall over? No, no, it was the there was the like a dogwood in front of it. Oh, yeah, it was a small split and I, I was able to save like a little sprouting. Yeah. So that's a right. planted tree too, right? Yeah. But the issue with that is is it's upslope. <laughs> so it's actually right you can see the leaves right here. Yeah. It's a couple of feet in front of me. Maybe three feet and three or four feet in front of me. Um but yeah, I mean, it is a shed and it is minimal disturbance. Um, the only thing is, if it's in the 25 feet, do we have to give some sort of a variance? Because it's... Is anybody here to comment on this? Did you have some questions? Yeah, please. Well, I mean, I was the one who complained about it. Mm -hmm. And um, where it's cited now is we're, we're working on getting my plot lines tight, but it's within a couple feet of my lot line. And that's just not acceptable. And the building inspectors already said that. Okay, so it's not a couple feet. Go, yeah, the building inspector hasn't commented. Well, he actually did the day he was there. But the, yeah, there's I think he's waiting so for you guys. Yeah, this is a first. Uh, yeah, yeah, this, this is a makes sense, right. Yeah. That's a separate. Because they'll have to way. meet a minimum offset from the property line, in which, right. in which they can point out where it is. Is it 15 feet from the property? I'm trying to think. 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20 feet. Well, who knows? I've been told 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20. Okay, 20. Yeah, and the structure, the structure if it's different. 20, but it's, a non, it's already in the way. Uh -huh. Good for right. But, lot. Oh, okay. but I have to do it. But so the 20 feet from the side line. I have to say you have Yeah, from the yeah, side line, right. right. But it might be different depending on the structure. Yeah, the back of the structure is. Right. Um, that would be a good question. Um, 
but it's not really one. I mean, we can deal with it in its relationship to the wetlands. If it's a relationship to a property line, again, that would be you know, building inspection. So exactly. Yeah. There, uh, there was. I sent you a note um, that on June twenty second, um, as best as I could judge, about twenty feet down from this shed, uh, there was standing water. Okay. Yeah, but I believe. I mean, it looks like that area. Yeah, there, there would be standing water down there and that's that's what we were just saying is where the wetlands is um, that's what we were just pointing out because you can tell from vegetation as well um, and then like I was saying on the national wetland inventory that you can go online and look at as well mm -hmm. um, it will tell you the soil types and then you confirm it um, and like I said it's towards the back corner of it, you're correct that there's probably standing water a few feet off of that. Um, and that's what we were just discussing. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's one of those that they allow for variances to a certain extent if it's existing lawn. You know, if it's an existing lawn there, even though it's, it does, it's not, doesn't need the 25 foot offset right. so, to put a new structure on. So for example, on your property where there's lawn out back there, mm -hmm. It's easier to allow for a shed because there's pre-existing lawn, and you can clearly see that it's lawn is a maintained area, mm -hmm. even though there may be wetland soils there, and in the past have been wetland vegetation to show that um, that it may be classified as a wetland because it's been maintained um, in that area. It's easier to it, it's in the Wetlands Protection Act that allows for minor activities such as sheds and other things along those lines to be placed on properties that are currently maintained in an accessory. Um, but it's not to say that it still doesn't have to come through this process, but that's why it's before us because there is a regulation that allows for that. Any other questions? Well, I, I guess I'm having a little trouble understanding what's on the table. Okay. So it's just simply images from the site visit from today of the area. Um, and then we have just a basic plan showing the area, an aerial photo, and then showing where the proposed shed is going to go. Okay. So. Um, He's filed what new paperwork? I'm no, no, no I, I've never seen any of it. So right, so you wouldn't until it comes to a meeting. It's okay. not and, public and, record until okay. it's at a meeting. Um, and they filed a request for termination, which, as I explained earlier, is a request for termination of applicability. So do the regulations apply in the sense that it potentially was pre-existing lawn? or pre-existing landscaped area for the fact that it's a they believe it to be a minor um, a minor impact activity basically which is under the wetlands protection act section section 1002 if you want to look it up trust um, so that's what's before us tonight and it's that's one of the two forms you can apply and NOI is a little bit more extensive typically for larger projects more impacting projects um, that require grading or fill or um, crossings that sort of a thing or like you saw earlier the larger developments um, mm -hmm. well I guess again my question is what's I kind of get what you're doing now but What's the next step? I mean, is there an approval on this? Or is there... Well, that, that's up to the commission. I don't know if you want to... Yeah, I, yeah, it was something that we would vote on, that the request for determination that they put in, mm -hmm. uh, that we can we'll vote to either approve it as a saying, yes, you can do this, um, and we have to give a, a reasoning behind this, certain reasoning they can give. Or we can say, no, you know, it's, it's not approved, and then basically can't build a shadow you go back to the drawing board with with another plan and there's a way you can appeal it to like department of uh, dep department of environmental mm -hmm. protection um 
Yeah, yeah. There's, there's also a chance, and I don't know, we, we normally don't try to hold people up too much. Um, there's a chance, too, we could hold over a vote until the next meeting, um, depending, and we can talk more about that. Um, one reason we might do that is so people could get back out to the site. I wasn't able to get out to the site, mm -hmm. um, which is unfortunate. Um, but it would also, because now that the RDA is public, would give if you're, yourself or somebody else if they wanted a chance to read through it, see what it says, see if there's anything specific in there that, that bothers them, or you know they say, well, well, you know, this is something I have questions on. Give you a chance to look that over, read through it, and then we'd have another meeting in two weeks where in theory we would vote, but we would open it up to questions again for anybody that wanted to comment. Um, and I've lived next door to that property for 40 years, and I have to tell you that They've done some clearing out, but it has been what it is for 40 years. Pretty much stayed that, yeah, that area. I mean, it's gotten worse because the town doesn't maintain the book. Yeah, so that fills and has changed. And the beavers took out a lot. Yeah, so, back there. But I'm, I have to say, I just... I don't get it, you know, and I'll, I'll be honest, you put in and don't notify anybody that you're building a shed. Okay, he didn't come here and he didn't call the building inspector. Right, so, so with that, the RDA, we, you don't notify um, a butter with an NOI is part of the administrative process that the applicant has to do that is necessary for them because the only well the only reasoning I can think of is because it still has the ability to say no and although on an NOI you have the ability to deny it as well this is the determination of applicability so it's either you're exempt from something or it's going to be one or two conditions or it's going to be accepted um, and then, uh, what was the other question? Well, this another one I have is, are you discussing leaving it there? Um, I mean, is that what's on the table here? In general, yes. In terms of, so as you were just hearing us talk about, we were talking about where it's located on the property, how close or far away from the wetland it is, what other potential areas on the property it can be even considered. Um, and at the end of the day, it's up to the commission. Um, but yes, yeah, so that's what we're discussing. In my opinion, the wetland's gotten better and better. When we first showed up, the water was extremely high, I think due to beavers, and mm -hmm. then they were it's the middle of the day. Yeah. <laughs> it's, well, I was going to say, it, it'll change. Give it five years. Yeah, it'll change. Yeah, exactly. It'll get better or worse. Yeah, that, the well, that whole area, the beavers come back, the beavers go yeah, away. It's changed a lot. A lot of the trees. Well, well I guess, you know, if I can go back, and it looks nice. this is in the wetlands. I mean, you can see it. Right. I've been there. You've, I guess, been back there. Mm -hmm. And I just, I thought we cared about wetlands. Yes, oh, sure. in this town. Oh, yeah. oh, sure. And I thought, when I saw that, what he had put up, I mean, I was appalled because it shows no respect for the wetlands. And I honestly don't think there's <laughs> no other place for him to put that. Well, that's, you know, that's, that's an opinion. Um, you know, I've, I've been a builder in my former life. I know how to put structures up. She's asked me for my help with things in the past. She knows that. You know that, Pat? Well, that's no, I'm why not, I'm, I'm not. I'm not, okay. not, I'm, not, I'm, not I'm not finished talking. I, well, I, I cited that because that was a viable area that had no wetland vegetation in it. I was respectful in the sense that I, I didn't put it closer under the tree. I, I'm cleaning out an area that a, a lot of stuff was dumped in. To say that I've been disrespectful, I just think is is a little outrageous. Now may I finish, please? Sure. Okay. There are other places. I he can say whatever he wants, 
But I'm asking you, as our conservation commission, to not just willy-nilly um, approve this. I mean, this to me is wrong. Now, if he can move it, it's not going to stay where it is because, you know, it's too close to my, my little lot box. But I'm just, you know, for somebody who's respectful to have charged into this with, without getting any permissions from any of you all, I'm, I'm stunned. You know, it and is, this is, is not. It is a process of education, though. You'd be surprised for a lot of residents who, even with the best of intentions, are just not aware of the Wetland Protection Act. So mm -hmm. it, it is, in my experience, it, it, is, it is an educational process. And well, that may be, but, you know, where it is is absurd. And their historical, it's a historic landscape where something like that simply doesn't belong. And, you know, but this is, I'm astounded by it. I mean, this has not been an easy process. And um, he came to my house. I had to call the police. He threatened me. That, that Pat, I gotta stop you right there. No. No, well, would, Pat, would I, you I, please? I did not yeah. hope. I hold on, hold on. Hold, hold. Can you actually, could, could you, you know, I don't, like but could you hold on one second? I, you know, I, I'm not sure that, like, Pat, I want to let you, I want to let Pat finish her statement first, and then I'll definitely give you a chance to respond, but we can't sure. cut each other off, okay? Sure. So I'll have, I'll give you a chance to finish what you were saying, yeah. but I just want to say, um, is it pertinent to what we're deciding in front of us? And I'm not trying to say it's not. But you know, neighbors yeah, have so. disagreements over a lot of things, and you know, if, if it was a disagreement over where the wetland delineation is, that's something that's pertinent to us. Absolutely. If it's a disagreement over something else, it's really not pertinent to what we have to discuss. Um, so that said, I, I just want you to think: like, is it something that we need to keep in mind when looking at Wetlands Protection Act and what our duties are here today? Does that make sense? So, uh, but please, I want you to give her a chance to finish your statement and you definitely have a chance to respond. And Martha, I definitely see you. I'll give you a chance to ask if you want to put your hand down. <laughs> <Thanks>. So, <laughs> go ahead, Pat. I'm going to be surveying my side. Okay. And it's going to clearly, in his comments to me, um, disrupt everything. And who was I? Da, 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 da. You know, I'm an old woman who sits, I'm a single person in my house, and I'm kind of threatened by somebody that does this. Now, that's why I'm coming to you all to put it stone wall in, because I want him as far away as I can make him. But I just, he knew what he was doing. And I don't, I'm just shocked that you would sit there and say there is no other place because there really is. You know, I think I must have gotten the same aerial that you did. And there are, I mean, I, I just don't get this. I'm done. Okay, I was, uh, um, there were two things I wanted to say, and I can't remember. I definitely will give you a chance to respond. Um, first of all, I, I, we haven't agreed to anything yet, so just want to make that clear. Um, second of all, I'm the, and we'll see what other people say too, and I hate to hold you up for another two weeks. I'm leaning towards continuing it to the next meeting um, so I can get a chance to go out there. Yeah. Um, and the reason for that is mm -hmm. it's it's kind of cut and dried. If it was existing lawn before, it would be very easy for us to say, yes, you can do it. People have the right to do that. We don't always like that as a conservation commission, but we mm -hmm. also need to respect that it's private property. This is people's largest investment, and it's very difficult to start telling them, you can't do this in your house, you can't do this in your house. Um, so if it's existing lawn area, it, it, it's very hard. We can condition it to a certain extent. 
I don't know that that was, and it's really hard to tell for me from the pictures from where it was and historically what's been there. Um, so I would like to get out onto the property if we can set a time just so I can take a look. Yeah, me too. Um, sure. What my fear is going to be, what's saying there's no place to put it, no place to put it, is that because, I, and I could be wrong, I think if the wetland gets delineated down the left side of the property and across the back, that when you start looking 25 feet in from here and 25 feet up from here, you're going to run out of a viable space to put it. Um, and I could be very wrong. We could look at that and look and say, oh, you know what, you could move this up 10 feet and over three feet and be on existing lawn and be far away from everything else. Um, but it could very well be we could go there and look and say, you know, if you move it up like that, you're going to have it half on your deck and half falling off. Um, if it's the case where any place they put it, it's going to be within that wetland buffer zone, then we kind of have to look at where's the safest place for that, you know, if it exists somewhere else, uh, depending. Um, the second thing I was going to say, which I had almost forgot, is that if, if you are planning to do, um, uh, to look at your lot lines again, to see the offsets, um, you know, now might be a good time for you, especially even, to, you know, if you're going to do that, just to hold off on completing the project because you know if it is, if it doesn't hit that offset, you're probably going to have to move it, regardless um, of what we decide. Uh, but that would be a separate issue. So yeah, okay. yeah. Um, did you have comments again, Martha? I yeah, I, I just so I've been a very kind neighbor. I know this sort of out of scope <laughs> of what we're talking about here. Just responding to this this idea of a threat. I know I'm kind of a big imposing guy. <laughs> I can't really help that. I went over to talk to her about dangerous material she was putting in my yard where my children play. And she was immediately abrasive. I, n I never touched her door. She threatened to call the police immediately and the conversation was over in 30 seconds. So, for the record, <laughs> there, was, there was no threat. Okay, yeah. Two weeks prior, I helped her off her lawn when she fell. Yeah. I've been a very kind and, and supportive neighbor. I've, I've, if you've seen the property, if, if anyone's been here 10 years or more, you know what that house looked like. My intention is to create a nice looking, respectable home where there isn't junk thrown across the yard and I can put, would any, any, any way anyone would put a shit on their property you drive around town and you see them everywhere. Yep. You see them directly on property lines everywhere. My intention wasn't to, I'm actually upset that Pat's upset. I, I don't want that. I really don't. I'm sensitive to that. Um, <coughs> but, you know, you'll come over and <laughs> I think oh, I exactly, yeah. Yeah. you know, my intention was with, certainly not to be disrespectful, was to be respectful sure. of that property as I have been the moment I moved into that property. Sure. And, and my behavior shows that. I you know, I believe both. It's it's hard to not no, but again, you know, we're you know, we'll try to focus on other things. Um, did you, I was gonna say, do you mind if I let Martha get her comment in for us? Martha, did you have a comment? I'm sorry. Uh, yes, as a lay person and someone who has been familiar with Bolton board and commission uh, rules and regs for a long time, I think that this is more than just an issue of a small shed being built uh, too near the wetlands area. Uh, it appears to be too near to a lot line, which would need a variance from ZBA, if that were true. Right. And it may even involve Board of Health if it got too close right. to the septic mound. Right. So I think before anyone makes a decision, there are a lot of little details that have to be done. And well, as far as I know, if you have a structure that's less than 200 square feet, I believe Mike Savage said you don't even have to file a from building permit mm -hmm. to yeah. build it. Mm -hmm. So right. it may not be just Mike's yeah. bailiwick. So I, you know, a lot of things have to be examined. Right. And I agree, they've done a wonderful job at the house. I knew the previous owner, it was a rental. <laughs> and. Uh, I just think you shouldn't rush into things no, here. I, I agree, but again, those those things are, are issues for other commissions. Um, right, but it's can, important that before you make a decision, well, you find out about those decisions. We can those make a decision things. as to how it's jurisdictional because to us. 
Right. Because they might be waiting to hear from us right. rather than us waiting to hear from them. Somebody yeah. has to uh, start the process of saying, well, this is what works for us. I must say and then the they time, can always counteract that. I I'm must sorry, say, uh, Mr. Chairman, in the time I've lived here in town since 79, it has not always been the practice of different boards and commissions interfacing and communicating with each other. They all have their own little thing and they say, well, that's CBA. No, that's Board of Health. That's Historical Commission. All of the commissions should be working together to help the landowners do things according to the legal yeah. uh, setup. Right. May I just speak on that question? Please, yeah. So I know I'm obviously new to town. Well, I've been here for a few months now. That's something that I think is highly valued and highly important. So on multiple projects, and I'll admit not on this project yet because I was just out on the site today, uh, Sean was explaining to me where the septic placement was. Um, and so when it comes down to it though, I haven't spoken to other boards or departments about this, but just simply on day to day, if I have a question about something, I talk to planning board, I talk to board of health when they're here, um, because I do think that's important. And if there are, Brian is right to say though that it does start somewhere in terms of we approve it and then someone else looks at it. I don't know if that's the case for this one. I'm not going to speak to that because I'm not sure. But typically, at least here in town hall, I can speak for myself and say that I do reach out to other departments to get their opinion or concern if there is something that's very tight in terms of setbacks. Um, but again, I don't have jurisdiction except for the wetlands. I guess my concern ahead, is you could say, well, this could be allowed, we'll let it be within the wetland district. But right. if it's going to be within a side setback issue, that's null and void until that's taken care of. Right, right. right. which is which is perfectly so fine for us to say, yes, you can build it here, and right. then they can say, no, it doesn't work the lot lines, then that's fine. You know, you have to propose a different place to build it because it's not allowed right. there, and come back to us and say, well, now we want to build it here. Does this work? Um, I will say real quickly, I have tried my best, Martha, to try to work with other commissions. Yeah. I will no, try right. to do better. But you're uh, relatively. I've, I know, and I've seen <laughs> I've seen that lacking as well, and I've run into problems where you know people have approved things that really have thrown us off. So I've tried to do better. I'm not sure I always can. Um, if people are okay, I am thinking of continuing this. Might be our best bet. I think so. Because again, Pat, that will give you a chance to read to the RDA. Mm -hmm. um, and it'll get some of us a chance to get out there. I hate to push it back another two weeks, but it, it, there's enough interest here where it no, seems I, to make I, sense. I respect the process, um, and I think it's, I think it's pretty cool that. process. Uh, so that said, and we are we are way off time, I think there's the time many people here, and I apologize to them. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and make a motion that we continue the, uh, the public hearing for 670 Main Street, the shed placement, until our next meeting, Tuesday, August 15th, 15th, at a time to be determined. Uh, do I hear a second? Second. All those in favor? Second. Aye. 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 So continued. Um, I'll talk to Rebecca and try to work okay. with Rebecca yeah, yeah, yeah. through you guys to see if I can figure out a time to get out there. And okay. I think other people might want to. Okay. Um, sure. you, can, you know, if you guys are there, great. If you're not there and you don't mind me, just welcome back and take a look. Yeah. Whatever just, time's going to work. Touch. Okay. okay. Sure. Yeah, you have my email address now. Yep. Yeah. yeah, and I have uh, your wife's as well, so yeah. I can, of course, want both of you at the same time. It's a crazy summer, but... Yeah. <laughs> so that's pretty nice. Um, okay, so August 15th... I think almost a time we'll could just talk I just thought about the street, too. So, oh, do you? Yeah, I mean, you can certainly try. Yeah. Any time. Yeah. Um, I'm in and out of Boston for work a lot. Um, we're driving kids around constantly. My wife is right now in the Netherlands for work. I'm juggling right now. My mother wants to help out. For this. Topic again. Yes. Yeah. 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 All right. Yeah. Let me, let me yeah. get to my. Thank you. We'll see you in a couple weeks. Say hi to your brother. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. We'll talk. And seriously, anything you find, we'll definitely press. No, I mean, I'm very serious about this. And I want to make sure that I understand your process. And I, you know, and again, it's hard for me to get this. Uh, it's, sometimes it's hard for us to get it to. So yeah. if, if that helps, we are often uh, double checking the process ourselves and looking at what we can or can't do. So it is confusing for everyone oftentimes. We try to do better. Be careful across the street. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Yes, Tom Denny. Yes. Hi. All right. Speaking of shed. Yes. Oh, no. Sorry. Yeah, here's Bobby with another <laughs> shed. Now we're about to understand how difficult it is. Yeah. Oh, of course. I mean, nothing's easy. I mean, nothing. And not because you know anybody wants to be. Just we have to all take precautions. Lots of things to think about. Yeah. Of course. Can't underestimate the importance of everything. Okay. Um. I'm just going to introduce myself. I'm Ariel Strelevich, and I've been the director of Tom Benny now for five years. <laughs> so I've been on this property, um, using the property, obviously, with your generosity for a long time. Um, uh, my name is Alex Kischitz. I run the Eco Ventures program, which is the program that will be using said shed most of the time. Um, I've been on. I've been a camper there for I think there for eight years. And I've been staff for five. Or six or something like that. So I've been there pretty much most of my life. <laughs> Alex, we're sorry. Um, head lifeguard, and I've been a camper for as long as I can. I think so kindergarten up. Uh, they say they get hired so they don't have to ever leave. Right. <laughs> yeah. I try really hard. I can't figure out a way to get rid of them. Yet. How many years has Tom Denny been running? As a TG dog? Really? That thing? So Very long time. So I'm like, I can get about half that tenure. <laughs> All right. Where would you like to start? Maybe just what What are we proposing? If you want to do the, the quick overview, and I think sure. we, we do have an idea. Of course. So our request to the word is just to consider the addition of a shed uh, to the Bower Springs area. Currently, we have two sheds that have been approved in the past. What we're finding right now is that we have a lot of safety equipment for lifeguarding. Um, there's a long list that I could would happily go over. Um, and quite frankly, I worry about damage to the equipment as we move it up and down from the main camp area down to where we need it down at the waterfront. Um, Unfortunately, because of border health, not unfortunately, obviously it's all important, but there's a lot of equipment that we ha are accountable for. Um, moving this equipment is, you know, time costly, it takes away from our programming, which bums me out a lot because I want to be able to use my staff in the best way possible, not as pack mules. <laughs> um, do you have anything to add, gentlemen? Not yet. Um, so the shed that we want to add, it's relatively small in size. It's four foot wide, uh, seven foot long, and then eight foot height at the peak. Yeah. Right. Just to give you an idea of the dimensions, um, we don't want to keep it down in the area that we're requesting for the entirety of the year, obviously because we're not using it, that would be silly, and we want to make sure the property is preserved as much as possible. Uh, so what we'd be requesting is for seven weeks, which camp runs five weeks, and we'd request just a buffer, you know, the first week to bring everything down, second week, or I'm sorry. The last week. Yes, the last week in order to you know, give us time to get rid of everything. So we collapse that shed, move it to somewhere to be stored. I guess that was my question. Is it a solid structure? Is it something that dismantles? Um, the one is we it on wheels? Is it something you um, The original plan was it collapses down, mm -hmm. and then it, we're going to put it up on blocks so it's not on the ground as much to try to conserve as much land as possible. Um, luckily enough, this particular spot that we're looking at there's actually no greenery there right now. It's all pine and it's all level. So we wouldn't have to be obviously encroaching it on the greenery at all. Um, can I just ask where, you're, are you proposing it where the kayaks are? Yes, yes, pretty much okay. right next there. I believe I sent you a picture. I don't know if you had a chance uh, to pull yes, them up. I can pull them up. Yeah, if you want yeah. just pull it up. Sure. Um, I got to use your lovely map. Right <laughs> see, see, see. <laughs> We use the maps. We okay. found it easily online. We're doing good work out there. <laughs> the, kids, the kids love the bridges. They, yeah, oh, we, yeah. had a, we had a camper this week who came back from, was it two weeks ago now? And he was like, are we going to do the bridges again? And we were like, unfortunately, no. <laughs> we are all bridged <laughs> out for this season. <laughs> we have more bridges. Bring them wow. on. Bring, yeah. bring yeah. it on. Bring it on. They loved it. They yeah, actually yeah. loved it. We'd be able to get them in the off season. Uh, Where are you buying this shit? Um, so what we're actually hoping to use is a repurposed one that we currently have, just because dimensionally it's... Is it plastic? Yeah, it's plastic. Yeah. Yes, it's plastic. Oh, um, pink? No, no, no. It's um, like it's a gray, awesome. green, very unobtrusive. Can we, can we paint it pink? No. Yeah. 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 Oh, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> um, so this is, just to give you an idea of the area, it's between the two main ponds. So right now we actually, so we have the kayaks there, so it's abutting that area. If I scroll. That's a picture. Um, to the, let's see, to the left of that tree is where we're currently storing the kayak. So it would be on this path, like right at the, I'm sorry, it'd be right to the edge of the path. Again, not being on the greenery. So, so on, so, I know you just showed the picture. Oh, sure. Okay. Okay. Let me pull it up again. Well, 
No, so where the kayaks are stored. So if I'm looking from the main path to where the kayaks mm -hmm. are stored, are you talking about? So if you're walking down the path towards yeah. the ponds, so yeah. the kayaks are on the right hand side. Yeah. There's the big, big, big pine tree right there. Yeah. It, the kayaks are on the left side of that pine tree. The shed would be to the right side of it. You on, the shed first. on the same side with yes, the on the same side. Yeah. Okay, okay. It's just better to keep it all consolidated. Right. But I, I was just yeah clarifying that it's not on that. Oh path. yeah. No, yep. no. 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 We okay. wouldn't want to obstruct the path. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see. And I just kind of want to highlight that again, this is mostly for safety equipment purposes. We, uh, because of a new law, what is it? Christian's, Christian's law just law, passed, yeah. so we now have to keep files of all of our children um, and rate them for swimming. So that's, you know, a small file cabinet that we keep down there. There's something called a shepherd's hook. I'm not sure how familiar. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so a few clarification thing. Um, yeah. Two lifeguard buoys. Let's see, the ring is another the piece. Ring. We have a back one, back the backboard is a major one, mostly yeah. because um, anytime you move that, any hits or drops that is damaging, it's kind of like a bike helmet in that, you know, you want to keep it. As pristine as possible. Yeah, yeah, just to yeah. keep it intact. I mean, where do you keep it now? Right now we keep it in a shed way back up at camp, so it's not so accessible. So every morning you bring that down? Yes, every, every morning. Well, not even just every morning, because we don't want to leave it down there in case someone wants to fiddle with it. So anytime we go to the waterfront, that can be up to three times a day that I have to have someone pull someone from programming to move the equipment down to the waterfront, then bring it back up. Yeah. Um, and I just want to highlight that there would be no chemicals or anything stored there. Um, <laughs> obviously it's an issue. Um, we want to respect that as much as possible. Everything is plastic, metal, just stuff that... Dry storage. Yep, yep. dry storage. Thank you. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's about 35 feet back from the pond where the kayaks are being stored mm -hmm. right now, I believe. So again, we just kind of abut that area. Um, and the, yeah, the 30 feet back from the pond? Like 35, what did we say? I guess like yeah, th th 30, I don't know. Yeah. Well. The kayak because the kayaks are obviously right. much larger. I think yeah. those are technically close to the water, but from the starting edge, mm. if that makes sense. Is it possible then to put the shed outside the twenty-five? If the no, so that that wasn't. I understand your question, but that if, wasn't what I was thinking. Um, if the boats are thirty-five feet back, yeah, is yeah, it possible to put the shed? shed? Yeah, yeah. So he's twenty-five. So what no, they're oh, saying yeah. is parallel on the right. Okay. So not on the opposite yeah. side. Yeah. So not off the trail between the kayaks and the pond. No, because on that opposite side, there's all vegetation. And right. we wouldn't want to have to... We're trying to... Okay. We basically pick this spot because it's flat yeah. and because it's not disturbing anything that already exists. Okay. And that's obviously something we want to it's help on, preserve. It's on the last area before it starts sloping down too much to actually um, level off. Any area for a shed. We don't want to, you know, dig yeah. into that area. We want to keep it yeah, as normal as possible. Yeah. At least I, I shouldn't say that because it's up to the commission. But as far as conservation property goes, and again, there's a 25 foot no disturbance area. Mm -hmm. um, as you were just mm -hmm. sort of witnessing yeah. our conversation, <laughs> <laughs> I learned a lot, obviously. <laughs> um, and so with that, he wasn't doing any grading. Um, so I certainly would strongly encourage the commission to not encourage any sort of grading or digging. Sure. Um, yeah, yeah, of course. So it is good that you found mm -hmm. a flat area. Right. 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 It, our goal is to disturb the land as little as possible. But I, you know, as a director, my number one state priority is the safety of the children. And so if anything I can do to kind of just make it more streamlined, I guess, to say, is what I'm going to advocate for. Questions? Do you have any other questions? Jen, Jen. There's eyes just like pink on <laughs> <laughs> They were really hoping for that. Um, your thoughts? Um, so I do have concerns that I shared with Ellie, and they're still the same. Sure, if you want um, to discuss them again. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's, it's not really even needing to be discussed, but rather just explaining again that, and you guys already sort of witnessed it, so it doesn't really need to be sure. explained. In terms of Bolton's very specific, in terms of that mm -hmm. one, 25 foot no disturbance yep. area. Mm -hmm. um, no other property, I don't think, could have boats or kayaks stored even temporarily mm -hmm. on the site. Yeah. Um, so to me, again, I am new within the past couple mm -hmm. months, so 
as far as the historical use of properties. I don't think I've heard of anything, but the commission may know different. Um, so that's why I'm hesitant to say, okay, here's another, although temporary, but structure put on um, conservation property um, that, I mean, definitely supportive of the camp and everything, all the, um, you know, the camp's mission. I think I stated to an email on Ellie and I said I love it, but it still has to be mindful and it seems like you guys are learning about it, um, being mindful of those setbacks and not only what we have to look over and have jurisdiction over on private property, residential or commercial, but now we're talking about conservation property. So that's why I'm really hesitant about things. I know it is a shed. We do a kayaks there, but it's also in keeping up with our regulations in itself and sort of setting the example. Um, and I would say I'll probably be out there this week just You're to sort of catch anyone. You're more welcome to join, welcome to join us uh, at any point. <laughs> we always love new faces. Yeah, I'll be there to say <laughs> hi, but also just so sure. someone can point out where it's going to go sure, so yeah. we can sort of confirm it. And I don't know if anyone else okay. even really cares about it. <laughs> I mean, not, say, no, no, not no, that no, you I don't mean, care. That's not the right word. But if, if, if you let me know when you're going and I'm around, I'll go out with you. Right. If yeah, not, I, I mean, I know Bauer Springs relatively. Yeah, I, I might just well. take a run out there and, and take a little walk through. Because sure. just looking at your pictures, I have an idea. Right, obviously, right. any pictures can only I take you so yeah. far. There's yeah. a to it's totally yeah. to be so in a physical location. Yeah, so I would know location. what area to get down to. Um, sure. So if I'm not able to come up with you, I, I can run out on my own as well. Yeah. Um, and I would say I'll put out some like flag or something, but I'd rather not for the sake of yeah. having kids running around. Right. Um, but yeah, I'm sure you can find this one. We can't put good idea, yeah. Yeah, if you, if you both like to come at the same time, even when they happen to walk you down there and just, again, I because I, I'm very visual, it always helps me to be in a physical location. And mm -hmm. again, I just want to stress that we're trying to do minimal damage possible. Like we love this property. Uh, we're just trying to, again, further the safety of the children and just make sure that I'm freeing up my staff to do their jobs I have not snuck it into their context yeah. <laughs> in the manuals quite yet, but I'm waiting the day yeah, that I can do yeah, that. That'll work. Um, is there any other questions? Anything I can address in general about the camp, maybe? <laughs> I might put my kids at the end of the camp. <laughs> I saw Yeah, yes, I know. Tom Denny. I guess uh, the other thing is, I'm interrupted. No, 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 I say, yeah. If when we do go out there and everything's okay, is it the other question that Ellie and I had was because it's the town's conservation property. Do we still need them to apply for an RDA, same as the last applicant, or because it's temporary structure on our conservation property, would it be sort of an event type of situation? So that would be my other question. So maybe that's, <laughs> that's <a really> good <laughs> the question. next meeting. I don't know, but that's just something that, okay, so if we get out this week, we go see it, or whoever else is concerned with it looks at it, can we just give the okay, or can I just give the okay after you're okay with it? Yeah, um, unfortunately, the original sheds were put in way before my time, so I'm not really sure what the process was that. And like you said, it's a temporary structure as opposed to a permanent structure that right. we're requesting. Like, um, right. Sorry, I don't mean no, to interrupt, no, but like the kayaks aren't in RDA because they're temporary and they're going to be removed at the end of the season. So right. I would assume that it's similar, but it, I just yeah. want to get that consensus from the commission before doing something. Was there ever a shed there before? No, there wasn't. Um, no. Fortunately, no, our camp is... Like that be mm -hmm. um, fortunately, we've just been able to reach out to a lot more people. Ellie and myself have done a lot more footwork in terms of trying to reach out to other towns, other conservation commissions, and just let them know hey, this is a group here that shares um, a similar mindset. We'd love to have your children here as well. Um, I think when I started, our weekly average was 45, and now we're roughly at 60 a week. So, it, no, it, it's really been incredible. We've restructured the whole program. I definitely push a bit harder in the education line. Yeah. So um, but there was no shed there before. No, no, yes. Yeah. So to get so to the work. kayaks were, all, were there. When the, we, we used to drag the kayaks down. We just... Um, that was the first thing we did this year. The trust 
bought the kayaks mm -hmm. last fall. Oh, that's right. Okay. So, so they're, they're still the still the still 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 the still outfitters used to come yeah, in and provide yeah. yeah. the service, and but he out. decided he no longer wanted to do that, okay. and he was generous enough to sell it. Yeah, right. Feels about. What? Feels about. Yeah. I remember that. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll say, and, and this is this is new information for me. It was it was my understanding that the shed was there to support the kayak hardware, so mm -hmm. that it was you know leg jackets and it was paddles and it was kayak sort of accessories. But it sounds like it's it's becoming something more than that, and it's satisfying some type of safety requirement associated with the actual swimming. Mm -hmm. I mean, we most likely right. if we had the space, I would absolutely put the paddles in there as well. Um, Right now, the way we were, we're just kind of doing, trying to do an inventory. It looked like we might be able to store them in there as well, which is yeah. fabulous if we can have it for a dual purpose. Same size as well, so all that would fit in yep. the same footprint. Yes, that is true, Luke Jeff. Okay, that was not clear to me, but it is now. Yep. Mm -hmm. It would be a really lovely breakdown of all our lifeguard equipment if you guys like. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> It's a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> I believe it. Um, 60 kids, jeez. So that's, I mean, it sounds like we have a good understanding of what you're trying to do. Sure, yeah. Um, Rebecca's going to try to get out there. I'll try to get out there yeah. too if anybody else has a chance to. Uh, Jeff, you should see Barrett Springs. It's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> you should check it out one of those years. Yeah, um, I'd love to see you on a lot. There's so good bridges we can take. <laughs> <laughs> We're in a great addition to the area. Someone can give me a tour. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so but then, then hopefully we can we can discuss a little bit and, and try to have a better idea and then sure. uh, Laura can reach out. Oh, wow, maybe not Laura. That's Rebecca can reach out to you. <laughs> Laura <laughs> might uh, Laura <laughs> might reach out to you. Wow, um, um, to to let you know kind of which way we'd be laying. If it's if we need to, we should probably try to figure that out if we would need to file. Which yeah, I don't think I need to file. Huh? You own the shed now. Yeah. So what we'd be doing is we'd be moving a shed we already have so down have there. Already, yeah, know. and then getting a different structure, like the same size. So the shed's put together now? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it, it kind of all pops in. Sure, I can do that. Yeah. I can absolutely. We can definitely do that. And it comes from uh, when we buy it, it comes in flat pack boxes, so that's how we collapse it and move it down. Yes, so I can bring it yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I can absolutely do that. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions I can answer? Or? Thank you. Well, thank you. No, thanks for coming thank in. Thank you very much. Yeah, sorry, yeah. I like a lot of yeah, chefs today. This is, yeah. Yeah. this is excellent. Thank you for all you guys yes. did too. The camp is Absolutely. great. I always thought it was great. Again, anybody's welcome to come by, obviously. Of We'd love to show you around some of the stuff we do. <laughs> all right, great. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, I really thank you. Um, just two quick things. One is the signatures for the termination of applicability for the CXS, CSX that we talked about at the last meeting with the termination of the type of it's type of um, And then also Jeff, since he was here via he phone, did not physically sign a document. Right. Call in my signature. Oh my God. Um, so that everyone else has signed it long ago. Yeah, don't get me started. Jeff, yeah, do you want to just close one out, Jeff? There's so much going on. I'm not a mortgage. Yeah. 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 Email is technically not a legal signature, but faxes are. I was like, I have fun. They are still. Well, they passed the law early on with faxes because people were using this. This is great. And then when people start using email, like, can we just change it so the email counts? And they never have. You know, so I, I have we, do have, we do have a mortgage, you know, yeah. they sent the paperwork to us and just signed it electronically. Yeah, and you can so scan, that. send it, yeah. So that one, everyone but signed. That's the COC? Yeah. And that one's going down, yeah, that's just the one that Jeff needed to me. Well, that was fun to that one. Um, did everybody have a chance to look through the minutes? Yep. yep. For 726, did anybody have questions, problems, issues? No. Nope. All right, I'd like to make a motion just, that... Uh, just. Oh. Sorry, but it, it does say in the minutes from the last meeting to store the paddles in my chapters. Yeah. Yes, because that would be being proposed. Okay, so it has evolved in my absence. It has evolved in your absence. Okay. Sorry. No, perfect, Mr. Chairman. Perfectly fine. Perfectly fine. Always stop me. What did you think it was before? Because I don't see him. Just. What did you think it was before? Well, well was we hadn't, hadn't heard the safety, safety equipment. Yeah. I yeah. that they had a lifeguard. 
I knew that well, they did, but I didn't that part, I wouldn't so. have even thought of. Yeah. Um, so we can discuss it. These are good. Good, good, good. All right. In that case, I'd like to make a motion that we approve the minutes for the July 26, 2017 meeting as submitted. Do I hear a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. So approved. Was there any other open? Nope, that was just the site visit. Um, and then Houghton Farm has, um, I did an erosion and sediment control inspection on lot 13, which is they're basically finishing up due to the extensions that we had yes. a few months ago now. Yes. <laughs> um, but a few meetings ago, and then also out on Century Mill Road, those lots have been purchased by a developer and they are in the beginning stages. And I've had a lengthy conversation with the developer just so that there is an understanding of how close everything is um, and that the ground pool needs to be certified. And really both lots? <laughs> yes. Yeah, that'll be, I'm glad you're on that because that'll be interesting oh. one to watch. I really am afraid they're going to try to overstep on that. I have full no, confidence in your abilities. <laughs> Thank you. Um, do we have anything else? I, I did have one thing. Please. Uh, really quickly, we had uh, a recommendation um, of a new, or at least new to me product, which is a biodegradable chain salt oil. So, you know, if you think about uh, the amount of work that is happening this year, the amount of clearing that the volunteer group has done, which has mm -hmm. been fantastic, um, you know, bar oil as a lubricant is a complete loss out of your saw. It's not recovered, it just is expelled into the environment. Um, so, uh, a product was suggested, which is 100% biodegradable, um, highly recommended, um, but it's on average about four or five times the cost. Yeah, it's, it's, it's like, cheap, a, like, yeah. a wall, like a wall thing. Yeah. So um, it's something that um, I would like the trail committee just to adopt 100% when working in conservation properties. I think it's the right thing to do. And when I say there's an increase in price, you know, it's $50 for the year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's totally minimal, but it, it is a product that, um, because of the increased cost of like, just to make available to the volunteers, mm -hmm. you know, it's hard to say, you know, we're drawing a hard line and this is what you have you to have use. You have to buy this. Oh, and by the way, you know, thanks for your service. Versus yeah. this is something that we'd like the team to use and here's some if you need it. Yeah. Type of thing. So mm -hmm. if the commission is, is, is favorable, I can send around the spec sheet, the price, you get an idea. It's, it's um, short money for something that I feel is um, the right thing. To say it fits our mission and yeah, right. what we're supposed to be doing. So yeah, I, I'd be more than comfortable with that. Do you have to drain the oil out of the saw now? Can you mix it? Um, this is the, the bar oil lubricant. Yeah, I know, but you which pour it into the saw. Yeah, right? and it's expelled as the saw. Mm -hmm. So yeah, just, it's but you can't like. I would try and just use it up and then use it up and then put the new one in. There you go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, you can dump. It. Yeah, you can dump it. I didn't understand your question. The question was, you know, you got half of a thing full of it. Just pour it in, and Absolutely. eventually it'll work its way up. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 So it will mix. Yeah. My only <coughs> suggestion is if, it, it, if the Conservation Commission wants to use the funds to do it, which I am fully supportive of, um, is that it, it's not we hand it out to people, which I know we were very um, on top of, but rather that it's stored in the container once we have a new lock on it. <laughs> and as needed, it gets taken. That's Absolutely. all. And I know. Like in your case, and if um, Gordon, who's in the program with us as well, as far as the conservation department goes, I would be okay with you guys holding on to a couple because you're out there consistently. I totally appreciate that. And for me, for me personally, I feel strongly enough. It's all I'm going to run in my saw, so right. I'll have my own personal supply. It's it's you know it's it's making it available to people when they show up to help. Yeah. Um, yep. Making them aware of it and, and yeah. having it on hand if yeah. necessary. I'm completely okay. on the same page. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah, me too. Cool. Good stuff. Yeah, good stuff. Anything else about exciting? Mm -hmm.
start raining. So it is coming. We'll jinx it. All right. Uh, Everybody's favorite motion. I'd like to make a motion that we adjourn the uh, August 1st meeting of the Bolton Conservation Commission. Do I hear a second? Who second. Wants to keep going? Oh. All those in favor? Aye. 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 So close. Good night, me, TV. Well, that was an interesting meeting. Yeah, today. very well done, Mr. Yeah. I thought, well, I was going to say we got it. I'm seriously, you know, that really well. Yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah.